Dawn of Robin Hood by Emma S. MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Characters represented Robin Hood, read by Christine G. Will Scarlet, read by Beth Thomas. Little John, read by Brad Philippone. Much, read by Esteban Zamanides. Alan Adele, read by Zames Curran. Friar Tuck, read by Ted Delorme. Sir Richard Adderley, read by Suman Barua. Maid Marian, read by Lydia. The Sheriff of Nottingham, read by Zames Curran. The Sheriff's Wife, read by Newgate Nautilist. The Baron of the Black Castle, read by Todd. Guy, read by Larry Wilson. Antony, read by Rapunzelina. Avisa, read by Bethany Baldwin. Jock, read by Elijah Fisher. Joan, read by Abby. King, read by Freda Booth. Queen Eleanor, read by Adele de Pignoroli. First Lady in Waiting, read by Bria Snow. Second Lady in Waiting, read by Avey. Third Lady in Waiting, read by Vanessa Cooley. The Messenger, read by Asher Garavi. Stage Directions by Rachel. Robin Hood. Prologue. We greet you all and bid you stay and look upon our little play here is the tale of robin hood whose court was in the gay greenwood whose merry men went to and fro more than six hundred years ago knight king maid marian you shall see come from the land of poesy smile kind on them whose bows were bent to shield the weak where'er they went and you may give a little sigh at helpless woe in days gone by and last we beg if skies be grey and winter here believe tis may our little stage the forest glade our curtain of the fresh leaves made come with us to the gay green wood in the good old days of robin hood act one scene one noon may day under an oak in sherwood forest logs or benches in centre and on left and right of stage food jugs dishes treasure chest scales etc on the extreme right of stage enter left Robin Hood with Scarlet, Little John, Much, Tuck, Alan Adale. Now he who would dull care forsake and live right merrily should take his good bow in his hand and should hide to the greenwood tree, the greenwood tree, and should hide to the greenwood tree. For the boughs wave lightly overhead and the birds sing loud and free, and tis merry, merry head down and merry, merry down. Tis merry neath the greenwood tree, the greenwood tree, and tis merry neath the greenwood tree. The sun shines bravely through the glade, and over the hill we go. As the sound of old Robin Hood's shrill horn, each bends his trusty bow, his trusty bow, each bends his trusty bow. For the boughs wave lightly overhead, and the birds sing loud and free. And tis merry, merry head down, and merry, merry down. Tis merry neath the greenwood tree, the greenwood tree, and tis merry neath the greenwood tree. Robin Hood, to Tuck, who sinks down on right hand log. What ails you? You look sad. Amongst us merry arches, the May Day was wont to be a time of mirth and feasting. Feasting? There speaks my master Robin Hood, King of Good Fellowship. It's food that aileth me, or rather I should say it is the great lack of it. Scarlet steps forward, stands centre. It must be near on noon. Look at the sun. Friar Tuck stands up, leans back, and gazes up at the sky. Hi, some of you hold me up. I faint for hunger, and cannot see the sun for emptiness. Much supports Tuck behind, and then pulls him down. On to right-hand log. Much steps forward. We have wandered many an hour, master, chasing the red deer. Yonder is meat roasted on the fire. Shall we not keep May Day with some feasting? Robin Hood seats himself on centre log. I will not dine to-day until we find a guest with whom to share our dinner. Singing and archery and no meat kill any man. I must be propped up by this log until our guest you come. 
sits down on the ground. Poor little John! I will not break my fast, I tell you, until a guest cometh. Tuck lifts clasped hands. Heaven send us guests in haste. Support me. I am so hungry I shall eat the oak leaves ere long. Little John! Little John! Ay, master. Go, little John, and look forth by yonder beach. Look up and down the glade, and see if no man cometh. Little John gets up slowly. Since my master command it, I will go. Walk slowly to left of stage. Scarlet, looking towards left of stage. Pray that some rich abbot be coming on his fat mule, laden with gold, costly raiment, and barrels of wine, white cakes, and pasties. Oh, speak not of all this. I am not so faint with hunger that I would not try a turn of the quarter-staff with the strongest traveller that ever came this way. Shakes his quarter-staff. Nay, Scarlet, we will use the next traveller who comes this road with courtesy. Strings his bow. May I not break his head with my quarter-staff? No, we'll keep that for others. I care not who tastes of my good quarter-staff. The next travellers shall share our meal, whoever they be. See you anyone coming, Little John? Little John turns round. Not but oaks and beeches. Wait. Nay, alas, tis but a hare in yonder brake. I thought it had been a man in brown raiment. His mind is distracted. Robin Hood goes on stringing his bow. Look longer, Little John. Rises. Hark ye all. We hearken. We hearken. It is May Day, and we have no May Queen for our sports. Perhaps she, too, will come this blithe morning. Our, Our queen, queen of May. Verily. See you aught. Only two wood-doves flying away. Alas, for our dinner. I will come and look. Goes left to little John. Robin Hood sits down again. Have patience. Master! Master! master. Behold, our company come. Rushes back to Tuck. I said the guests would come. Tuck falls on his knees. Our dinner cometh, jumps up and calls to Little John. In what guise comes our dinner to us? A knight and a lady, downcast and sorrowful they seem. The lady weepeth. Greet them and bring them to me. Little John kneels to Knight and Marian, who enter on left, looking sad and clad in ragged clothes. What will you? Little John, rising. My master greets you and bids you dine with him. Thanks, gentle friend. We will willingly do so, for my daughter is nigh to fainting with weariness and hunger. And so are we all. Oh, dinner! Dinner! Little John brings knight and lady to Robin Hood. Here, master, are your guests. Little John is on left side of stage. Robin Hood holds out his hands. You are welcome. And you, gentle lady. Did I not say that they would come to share our dinner and make glad this day? We have tarried for you and faced them till you came. We thank you greatly. Verily, kind friend, at the sight of so many archers, my heart did quake with fear. These are my merry men, and I am Robin Hood. Knight starts back. Robin Hood, the outlaw. Are you the fierce outlaw of the forest? I am he. Takes her hand and leads to a seat on a centre log. Yet fear nothing, fair lady. We are wild dwellers in the woods, who live on what we kill with our bows and arrows. But no courtesy shall be lacking to you. Stands on right of Marian. Bring the feast. Alan, Adale, and Much fetch food from right, set it on ground in front of center log, and then return to their places on right. Robin Hood, to Knight, pointing to left-hand log. Will you not be seated? Knight sits down sadly. You are sad, Sir Knight. Verily I am, good king of the woods. Robin Hood pours out wine and fills a cup, which he hands to Knight. Well, here is somewhat to cheer you. Let us all fall to. Robin Hood hands round food, and they all eat. Methinks you have saved my daughter's life. I could almost forget my griefs in seeing her revive. I am indeed refreshed. Little John comes from place on left and hands food to Knight. You must also eat, good sir returns to left alas i have but little appetite much springs forward are you sick i have most excellent herbs of the forest that will cure you wise physician no herbs of the forest could cure my ill which is a sorrowing heart but rest with us and cast care aside 
we in the woods are merry would i could be merry too here be fair no ill while i must endure the scorn of my enemies much takes ellen dale's hand we live in good fellowship my friends have all forsaken me hides his face alas it is truth robin hood sits on centre log right of marion now knight and fair lady unfold to us your grief have we not all of us known hard days verily master there are brambles and mires in every man's road i could weep for pity we'll fill up his cup go on good sir who are you i am a knight of the west country in many a pitched battle have i fought and with the cross upon my shield i slew the heathen in holy land sir richard at the lee is my name and this is my daughter who is called marian fair lands were ours a castle by the swift river which rises in the western mountains it was a goodly heritage i had but evil days fell on us alack my brother slew by mishap a knight in a tourney and to save my brother in his right i was forced to pledge all i had to the sheriff of nottingham the sheriff of nottingham he is our deadly foe he'd throw us poor archers in black donjons if he could catch us well it was to him i pledged my lands and castle and if i cannot pay him pound four hundred before to-morrow eve they are all forfeit i can pay it no way what will you do if you cannot get the money good friend alas my lands and all will be the proud sheriffs and i shall go over the seas with my daughter to some distant land alas poor lady beggars shall we be marion weeps you have done us good service and given us bountiful entertainment but alack i can only repay your kindness with this miserable coin see my bag is empty little john looks in tuck rises and looks both raise their hands tis, tis empty, empty quite. quite no coin will i take now but one day sir knight you shall pay me well for this dinner and for your fair broad land besides little john beckons to little john who comes over to right of robin hood can we help the knight verily master i think we can little john and you scarlet fetch out our treasury who has the key i have the key produces big key little john and scarlet go to right of stage and fetch the chest which they set down in centre front of stage much unlocks it then scarlet returns to his place behind tuck and much to his place on left of allen dale little john stands right of robin hood who has the scales here are the scales holds up scales weigh out four hundred pounds that will redeem the lands and castle allen a dale weighs out gold which robin hood takes and hands to knight allen a dale goes back to his place nay but good robin hood you shall return in a year and pay me knight rises we ne'er can thank you marion rises nay never noble robin hood a year from to-day ere it be high noon we will stand beneath this oak and deliver you the pound four hundred and bless you for our kindest friend never shall we think on barnsdale or sherwood without blessing robin hood and his brave men it is well to succour a friend in our need master their raiment is full worn and ragged methinks we might furnish them somewhat better little john you are right fetch hither our cloth good allen a dale to knight and marion those who taste the hospitality of the woods should wear the merry livery of the forest <laughs> would you clothe us like trees in the springtime little john must give you of our good cloth of lincoln green allen a dale fetches cloth and spreads it out in front of stage scarlet comes forward with his bow here is my bow to measure out the cloth he kneels and measures cloth which allen a dale holds out much stands on tiptoe and looks over tuck's shoulder look to each good bow length does he add a piece <laughs> he thinks that all men be as big as himself <laughs> when cloth is cut it is given to little john scarlet and allen a dale return to their places that is well a brave knight should not ride alone would it not seem me to have a squire to wait upon him and the gentle lady you speak truth go little john with the knight and the lady guide them through the forest and wait on them with reverence fight their battles follow them wheresoever they bid you go i will good master since you command i will go with them to the world's end 
goes over to left and stands behind knight we shall have a trusty squire he will return with us next year faithfully we will repay the money but never can we tell our thanks i did it full gladly come back as you promised by noon on may day we will we will and i would ask a boon fair lady come back and be our queen of may in the forest i i oh, our queen of may. of may i will i will i will be your queen of may when a year has rolled away you shall hold my court so gay boughs of green oak binding cuckoo flowers and buds of may for a bright crown winding hey span o oh, sweet spring draw nigh summer pass thou lightly by winter when thy snowflakes fly and earth the rest are taking silent like the woods we lie until the springs are waking i will be your queen of may coming back upon this day green woods witness what i say birds sing my vows binding to the oak we'll find our way by roads or rough or winding marion the knight and little john go out left followed by robin hood and his men end of act one Of Robin Hood by Amos MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two. Scene One. Next day. The house of the Sheriff of Nottingham. Narrow table slightly on right. In center of stage, jug and cups, three chairs. Enter left, Sheriff and Baron with scroll and money bags. They seat themselves at table, sheriff facing audience, baron at right end of table. Sheriff's wife enters left, and sits spinning on extreme right of stage. A hundred and ten, eleven, careful, twelve. A noise heard outside on left. Baron looks up angrily and bangs his fist on table. There is a sound outside. We are watched. Go on giving me my money. Sound comes again never have i peace from morn till night enter on left anthony and guy dragging in jock and joan bound what is it sirrah who are these villains i know not nor care either they have killed the king's deer in the forest tis untrue we... silence i know you you have slain the king's red deer robbed on the high road frightened honest men we have we are not. innocent Enter from left, Avisa, in haste, goes center. They are innocent. Tis a false tale which is told against them. Hark! Be silent. Comes over to right and stands by Baron, facing left. Listen, good sir. Fling them into the deepest dungeon that you have. Wife looks up from her work. The dungeon is terrible, close by the moat. The water creeps in at certain seasons of the year. Pastor's not there. They did no harm. Have pity. Listen, wise judges. Hear the truth. It was a false tale he told. Turns and points to Anthony. You dare to say that I spoke false? Yea, I dare to say it. I'll shut you in the dungeon if you are not silent. They did not slay the deer. Another man had done it, and he fled and left my children to be seized that is an idle tale we have so often heard folk say we did not slay the deer 
our ears are weary of the jest a jest say you sweet lady will you entreat for my poor son and daughter i cannot i know not of the matter avisa kneels for tender pity's sake he thinks i grieve for you but in this world poor grief is often unavailing i beg you speak no more to me turns away avisa rises up what shall i do when you have torn away my children you have the world to live in but only sorrow for my company baron rises angrily bangs down his fist on the table i pray you take away these chattering jays bid all this idle clamour cease come seizes them again take them away to avisa it is vain go as jock and joan are taken out they look back and say aside to avisa courage good mother if we escape death we will fly to the forest and join the outlaw of robin hood join us good mother in the forest will ye not take them hence away with you all anthony and guy with jock and joan go out left followed by avisa weeping baron sits down it is a lack of courtesy in you sir sheriff to have this evil ragged rabble clamouring here when i have made this journey to your house on weighty business i crave your pardon i must do justice to all men i care not what you must do i must have the lands i need them methinks four hundred pounds is but a little sum to pay for them what would you have it should be two hundred pounds more methinks well i must have them whate'er i pay eight hundred or a little sum to pay for such fair lands the castle stands by the river guarded well from thence you behold all all the plain there are deep meadows cornlands forests full of deer these these must be mine you must pay for them think of the danger that i run the knight sir richard at the lee may return to pay me baron leans back in chair and laughs <laughs> return and pay you he's dead drowned hanged his bones lie white on some far shore wife looks up think what you do baron leans his elbows on table yeah we will think a curse will come on you if you defraud the knight and his poor daughter you know not what you talk about we'll talk no more either i must have the lands and you want the gold old money-bags unrolls parchment deed the gold the gold yes yes but tarry little tis not quite the hour i will not wait he may return or the hour has come baron stands choose will you sign this paper and have the money if not my horse is at the door and i'll be gone sheriff signs paper and then clutches bags of gold your knight will not return and i shall have my lands wife rises oh you have done an evil deed sheriff clasps bags go hence and leave us mind your spinning oh what a tangled web it is beware hark even now some one knocks at the gate <laughs> laughs and goes out left enter on left knight and marion in poor clothes followed by little john his green clothes hidden by a cloak and hood which he keeps over his face sheriff falls back in his chair what is the night come what have i done i know not i have got my lands i trust you old rascal knight and little john kneel ha 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 i thought so he has come to beg another month wherein to pay the money see how he humbly kneels you cannot have another hour nay not one hour rises i lent you gold pure gold in your great need would you not grant us further delay not a moment sits down and pulls sheriff into his seat drink to me sir sheriff the knight may kneel a while fills cups from which they drink if you've no money hence from the hall knight rises little john also you are uncourteous to let me kneel i have fought in battles and in the holy land and served the king as well as you have ever done that you should treat me thus you had better give him money so that you hold the lands in peace here's a bag of gold nay give him more or you may rue it 
Knight stamps his foot down. What is this you say? No, never shall false baron or sheriff hold my lands. Come hither, come hither, good squire. Little John gives bag of money to Knight, who strides up to table and flings down bag. Here is your money, sheriff. Take it. I have paid you before the hour. Baron, to sheriff. Wretch, you have cheated me. I must have the lands for which I paid you. So you have bought and sold my heritage. Sheriff clutches at money. I will keep the gold if I die. I will tell the king of your villainies, unjust judge. But let me keep my money. Drops back in chair. I am sore stricken. I shall die. That is not to me. To night. Where did you get the money to pay the debt? I'll find the rascal who has furnished you with gold to spite me. Springs up and rushes at little John. Who is that muffled wretch? Pulls off his hood. What? Green raiment? It is one of Robin Hood's outlaws, I trow. Seize him! Tis Robin Hood has lent you the money. Tis he! Seize him! Hi! Anthony! Guy! Bind the cutthroat servant! Little John bends his bow. Baron springs back. I will protect the servant of good Robin Hood. Shields Marion and Little John with his sword, and they all three pass out left. Baron rushes after them, then turns. They're gone, but I will be revenged. Wife enters left. It seems your counsels have not prospered. Looks at Sheriff, who sits silent and crushed. Look how he trembles. Oh, let him tremble. That a miserable outlaw should have thwarted me. He is not far from here, and I will hunt him down. Then I will give in the king's hand the boldest outlaw in his land. Baron goes out, left with drawn sword, followed by Sheriff, supported by his wife. Scene two. Some months later, Sherwood Forest, a bush on right of stage. Enter left, Robin Hood, Tuck, Scarlet, Much, Allen Adale. Join hands and dance round in a ring and then sing. Now bend your bows, my merry men, and, and draw, draw the trusty, trusty string, string, and laugh and, and dance, quit adventure set. set. Who knows what the day will bring? And laugh and dance, quit adventure set. Who knows what the day will bring? And laugh and dance, quit adventure set. Who knows what the day will bring? Your winding horn, my merry men, loud through the woods doth ring. The sun shines bright, quid eventorum sit, who knows what the day will bring? The sun shines bright, quid eventorum sit, who knows what the day will bring? The sun shines bright, quid eventorum sit, who knows what the day will bring? Your arrows true, my merry men, straight to the mark they wing. Where they go, you know, quid eventorum sit, who knows what the day will bring? Where, Where they, they go, go, you know, quid eventurum sit, who knows what the day will bring. Where they go, you know, quid eventurum sit, who knows what the day will bring. Robin Hood, Scarlet, Much, Allen Adale, dance off left. Tuck whirls round singing, Who knows what the day will bring. Knocks against Jock and Joan, who rush in from left. Save us! We have escaped from the dungeon. The baron's men are on our track. They will slay us. Hide, Hide us. us. Hide us. Tuck pushes them behind and jumps in front of Bush on right. Anthony and Guy rush in from left. Where are those have rascals? Have you seen the wretches? Tuck spreads his dress and makes himself as big as he can. What wretches? Why, they were flying through the wood. Which wood? This wood. They are knaves brother and sister who slew the king's deer they've joined the outlaws they broke loose from prison what prison why the sheriff's prison fool call me a fool i am a friar we care not who you are why do you stand like that that is my matter not yours ay why look you so into the beech tree because i tire of looking on your face <laughs> get you gone we are the baron's men i care not i have a better master than yours our master could throw yours in prison and mine could slay you both picks up staff i'll call him and his archers Ho! Ho! murder robbers cutthroat both run out left tuck brings out jock and joan they are gone gone Oh, brother, are we safe? 
Are they departed? Oh, look and see. Enter on left Robin Hood, Scarlet, Much, Allen Adale, then Aviza, who rushes up to Jock and Joan, embraces them, and takes their hands. Oh, they are safe, both safe. Robin Hood, we have all escaped at last to you. You are all in safety now. Takes Jock and Joan by the hand and gives them to Aviza. Here in the great wood I am king. No man shall hurt you. The bows of all my archers would be bent in your defence if you called. Good dame, you still look sad. Alas, I have cause. Prithee, be of good cheer. Woe is me, we are lost. Nay, never. Say why you are sad, seeing that your son and daughter are in safety now. Dry your eyes and be comforted. It is for you I weep. O oh, brave, O oh, noble, O oh, most valiant Robin Hood! They have seen little John and discovered where you abide. The baron of the black castle desires to take your life. He is journeying to the king to tell him where you are. He thinks he will win honor of the king by giving the outlaw Robin Hood into his hands. And they will hunt you down, master. I will lead them a brave dance, I promise, before they catch me. A jack-o'-lantern dance, O oh, a fen and forest the baron has sworn that if he should do nothing else for a whole year he will hunt you through the land he knows you lent the good knight the money and he hates you he had bought the knight's lands of the false sheriff the sheriff's wife did tell me this i will die fighting with my merry men if you die we have no protector jock and joan run up to robin hood and stand one on either side of him if you die we have no friend and we no leader our captain prince of archers king of the good greenwood bow down bow down ye heavy hearts for all your comfort now departs in pitying tears dissolve the sky if gentle robin hood should die greenwood's your shining dress forgo look out to make it full of woe through all, all the leaves, leaves the wind, wind would sigh, sigh gentle, gentle Robin Hood should, should die. Who was our comfort and delight? Good, good angels save from proud despite. For us on earth no help is nigh, if gentle, gentle Robin Hood should, should die. Robin Hood goes out left, followed by the others in a mournful procession. End of Act Two Of Robin Hood by Amos MacDonnell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three. Scene One. Some months later, the King's Palace. Two chairs center and benches right and left of stage. Enter left Queen, her three ladies and Marion. Ladies sit on right hand bench. Queen on right hand chair, Marion on a low chair beside her, left. So, gentle Marion, you would leave us? Dear Queen, I only entreat your leave to go from your court for a little space. Are you not happy at our court? Spring is coming, and we shall have jousts and merry feasting soon. I thank your grace, but my father and I have a journey which we must make about this season of the year. Before we go, we must return and set our affairs in readiness. Do you go to some holy shrine, to Canterbury or to Eli? Nay, my father has visited far distant shrines, and brought back boughs of palms such as the saints hold in their hands, but this journey is to no fair church. Where do you go, then? To visit one who helped us in adversity. Well, God speed you on your way. We have rejoiced to have you at our side. Draw up that seat, and unwind these threads for me. 
Marion seats herself on left-hand bench and draws threads. Queen turns right to ladies. Is there any one of all our train so gentle, fair, and good? Points to Marion, then takes up her book and reads. First Lady to Second Lady I weary to hear the praise which our good queen bestows on this maiden. Verily, she is but the daughter of a mean knight of the west country, living doubtless in some rat-hole castle in the mountains. She and her father flaunt like peacocks now, but they say it is only a few years ago that the same knight and his fair daughter were beggars. Beggars? Yea, beggars dressed in rags, their lands and castle pledged. That is true, I warrant. I heard it from one who— Queen looks up and closes her book. What's that? Are ye whispering there amongst yourselves? Idlers, set to your work. By Pentecost that tapestry must be finished. Reads again. I wish the queen would make that proud Marian finish it. Truly, look at my unhappy fingers. They will be only bones by Pentecost. Before Pentecost my father would make this journey, dear queen. Your father did the king good service in the Welsh wars. In winter snow, cold, hunger, were Sir Richard of the Lee ever foremost. I rejoice he holds his lands in peace. The king will not say your father nay, but ere you go you shall sing to us, Marian, a song to cheer us at our work. Right willingly. Rises. What shall it be, my queen? What you will. Whatever songs comes to your lips. To third lady. Here, take my book. I pray you sing not to offend my ears. No loud boisterous minstrelsy for me, I pray. I'll do my best to please you. Comes forward and sings. King enters, left, with Sir Richard at the Lee, and Little John. First, second, and third ladies jump up. The king! The king! The king. king waves for them to sit still. Rest, gentle ladies. That was a sweet song you sang, and now, Nightingale, you will fly away and leave the court. So please, your grace, my father and I would make this journey. Yea, your father says even thus. To night. I owe you for faithful service, and I will not fail to reward you, on the word of a king. Since my fortunes mended, it has been my chief delight to serve you, my liege. No boon you ask shall be denied. I thank you. When I return, my sword is ready at your bidding. Come, daughter, and you, my trusty squire. Your squire rendered good service in the wars, they say. He did come forward turns left and pushes little john forward towards king men say you are a peerless archer please your grace near as good an archer as bold robin hood ha 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 robin hood the outlaw the gallows for such as he little john bows you have no need to-night this fellow of yours has a merry countenance i thank your grace make one sirrah turns to queen this fellow pleaseth me yea i can make a merry jest when it serves me you are a waggish knave but peace leave jesting now farewell my king and you my gracious queen bows farewell knight marion and little john go out left king seats himself by queen on left chair and puts some flowers into her hands messenger enters from left my king kneels 
The Baron of the Black Castle comes on urgent business and craves the hearing immediately. Bring him into our presence. Messenger goes out, left. Queen to ladies. You can stay here, but ply your needles. Enter left, Baron of the Black Castle. What will you? You have ridden in haste, it seems, and are heated and weary with swift travelling. I come on urgent business, wherein your grace's safety is concerned. I will deliver into your hands one who has long defied your majesty. Is it one of my Welsh rebels? Not Welsh, a nearer rebel. Sit down, and tell me who you speak of. Baron sits down on left-hand bench. For a whole year I have hunted for this man, and spent much gold, and ridden over fens and moors, in snow, wind, and rain, to find him and deliver him into your hands. You are much angered. Queen aside. His eyes are furious. He trembles and can scarce tell his tale for rage. What man would you give into our hands? That villain, cutthroat, lurker in thicket shadows, Robin Hood. Robin Hood? Yea, the outlaw Robin Hood. Verily, he is an outlaw, for he has slain our deer, has— He is the blackest villain in your land. Methinks we have many. But Robin Hood excels them all in wickedness. The, the saints, saints preserve, preserve us. us. Robin Hood has killed our deer, and should be sternly dealt with on that account. But what else has he done? Baron jumps up. I can call witnesses. Honest men can testify to what he has done. Bring them in. Come, Anthony. Come, Guy. What dost thou know of Robin Hood? He is a very terrible villain. Aside to Baron. That is right, is it not, my lord? Speak on, knave. Robin Hood lives in the woods. I know that. Speak on. He is some ten feet high, so please your grace. I care not for his stature. What does he do? Do? He wears a gold crown and sits under the trees and kills all gentle travellers who come by, and he has sworn to slay the king one day. That touches me somewhat. Enough. Thou canst go. Anthony stands back left. Anthony aside to Baron. Was not that well said? Peace. To King. Here is another. Pushes forward Guy. He can tell much of Robin Hood. Who art thou? So please you, uh, I am Guy of the field by the windmill. Guy of the field by the windmill, tell thy tale. When didst thou see Robin Hood? Guy trembles. I cannot speak. I shall die if I do even think of what I saw. Go on, I command thee. I did never see Robin Hood. Leastways, I came through the forest once, having, so please you, been many times there. Well, once I went... It was on a Friday, eight years ago, come Martimus. Tell thy tale faster. Uh, did I say Friday? On my knees I crave pardon. I, I speak false. It was Tuesday. Tell thy tale faster. Yes, I can speak fast. Well, as I say, I was in the forest on a Wednesday, and as I drew near to the trees I heard a strange sound. First, second, and third ladies, stopping their work. Oh, oh terror! terror. Verily, sweet ladies, it, it was all dark, and nothing could I see or hear, so I knew Robin Hood must be near. Terrible! I knew he would be in some ditch or thicket, so, being a bold and hardy man... What did you do, brave fellow? I gathered my cloak round me, put my hand to my ear, shut my eyes tight, and ran through the forest shouting and calling on the saints. And then? And then? Oh, it's the truth I speak as I live, on cold water. Suddenly I struck something hard. Oh! oh. Didst thou hit thy head against a tree? Against a tree? No, tree indeed. It was that villain Robin Hood who felled me to the earth, and I fainted. Ah, me! How looks Robin Hood? Oh, he has horns, I think. Two long arms, two legs. How sensibly he speaks. But thou wert lying fainting on the ground? Yes, knave, thou wert senseless. Truly. But I know he has horns and roars like a lion. I lay on the earth, my king, like one dead. Yes, sweet ladies, like one dead, stiff, cold, lifeless. And what after that? 
for as thou art here we may believe that robin did not utterly slay thee oh uh, afterwards afterwards i got up and went out of the forest ha <laughs> ha oh robin hood you are a mighty monster to frighten such brave men robin hood should be caught and hanged your grace hanged would that not be a mild punishment for such a villain methinks before he dies i would fain see this robin hood see robin hood he has sworn to kill the king yea and he will kill us dread king do not make me your guide to the forest i cannot break my head a second time oh what i suffered riding there good ladies as i lay stiff cold and senseless on the earth alas poor man i was quite dead peace i tell thee i will come to the forest and see robin hood to baron you shall take me to the place where he haunts where is it in barnsdale and sherwood forest he is oft found but consider my liege the danger to yourself to go into the woods where robin hood and his archers stalk up and down with bow in hand give me men and your warrant i fear not in your service and let me go and slay him myself i am the king and i alone do justice in my land i need not your sword my bold baron to keep order if robin hood be all that you and these brave men declare him to be why no punishment is too bad for him but i will see him with my own eyes he must be a subtle rogue to have frightened so many wise people out of their wits indeed i am a broken stricken man we will go armed fully but disguised as travellers prepare disguises for us get you russet cloth black hoods such as sober merchants wear upon their travels oh, we will do your bidding hasten to get ready our disguises rises no one must guess we are the king i would fain go along with you my lord king sits down again beside her nay now gentle lady think you of the terrors you have heard of robin hood he has horns roars like a lion were he the dragon that st george did slay i'd have no fear of him yet think the way is hard rough roads the trees are roof moss for a bed our table the gnarled roots of an oak queen rises tell me did i fear to sojourn in the lone castle of carnarvon among the fierce welsh was i afraid to cross the seas and bide with you in camp while the battle with the heathen raged around me i trembled not at mountain savages nor saracens and shall i be afraid to come with you in your own forest even should we encounter the stoutest outlaw in your realm bravely spoken o my queen i will go with you disguised sits down i will be dressed as a merchant's wife my lady shall come with me ah nay my veil will be torn in the thickets weep for each brave kirtle which the brambles shall devour oh the thought of the forest wolves thorns bears cold heat darkness starvation serpents poisonous herbs death destruction robin hood i could weep dry your eyes queen and three ladies rise and make ready our disguises you shall be attendant on the merchant's wife you shall be a prioress you her attendant none we will not tarry long then do your way i have tried to serve you we will not forget your service eager servant you shall have your reward i want my vengeance that is my reward tomorrow is may-day we'll keep it in the forest come ma chere reine takes queen's hand we'll hasten to the fearsome wood and judge the outlaw robin hood king and queen go out together left followed by ladies in waiting baron anthony and guy scene two may-day morning a year from beginning of play under an oak in sherwood forest three logs or benches centre and right and left treasure chest and food on extreme right jug and cups on extreme left of stage enter left robin hood scarlet much and avisa who carries garlands robin hood stands centre scarlet on his right much and avisa on left it is may morning the larks sing high overhead the sun shines on the meadows and now his beams creep into the depths of the wood men beasts and birds must seek their food 
come, Scarlet. Come, much. Let us away and bring some venison home for dinner. We'll dine at noon. Heaven send some rich traveller this way. You will make ready our food when we return. Robin Hood, Scarlet, and Much go out left. Gladly will I do so. This is the day of all the year. Ere the dim morning had dawned in the forest, we went through the deep dew and brought home the May. O oh, month of gladness, banish our sadness. Crown with thy beauty thy own festal day. May time to honor we hang up our garlands on trees and o'er fresh streams that shine in the sun. White hawthorn bringing with birds we're singing, telling to all men thy reign has begun. Avisa goes out left. Enter left. First lady in waiting, second lady in waiting, and Guy, who carries a bundle. They move across the stage and stand on the right, facing audience. I am fainting with hunger. It is more than two hours since we tasted food. My eyes are blind with weeping for my torn raiment. First lady starts, catches hold of Guy's arm. What is it? What frightens you? Second lady, drawing nearer. Yes, tell us. Do you hear anything? No. Do you see aught? Well, courage, what is that? It is tall and straight. Coward, it is a tree. Yet there's a sound. We are ended. First lady, Guy, second lady, move farther to right. <laughs> Fool, it is the king and queen who come behind us. Enter from left, king, queen, third lady, Anthony, and baron. Anthony carries bundles. All are disguised. King, stand center. Here we are in the forest of Sherwood. A mean and wretched place. Full of trees, just rank and green. Now we are near the haunt of Robin Hood. Any moment he may appear. Oh, misery! There are plenty of trees to climb for safety. Alas, so many trees that I shall not know which to choose. I care not for Robin Hood but I would that we could get some refreshment for the queen. Nay, travellers must not look to find their dinners cooked on the bushes. The bushes! The bushes! Ah! Points right and pulls back first and second lady toward centre of stage. Something did stir in yonder bush. It is the robbers. Hi, unmannerly knave, help me to a hiding place. They, they are, are on, us. on us. First lady, guy, second lady, move quickly behind king. Enter left. Robin Hood, Scarlet, much. King faces Robin Hood. Who are you? I am Robin Hood. Oh, that I might slay him where he stands. Let me hide. Ah, oh, vain to be dead. We greet you, Robin Hood. And who are you? Good as yourself, I am. How? Oh, remember, I am King here in the forest. You are indeed. We are travelers, but we are envoys of the king. We will treat you well if you are messenger of the king, who is a better man than his sheriff. But remember, at a blast of my horn, archers come with bent bows to do my bidding. You are a proud fellow. I am nearly as proud as is Robin Hood. Scarlet moves toward the king. Try no jesting with us. Seizes king's arm. Leave him alone. Scarlet obeys and goes back to place behind Robin Hood. You rule your subjects well. As well as the king of England rules his. Ha-ha! <laughs> you have more obedient subjects. None of your subjects are outlaws. But come, we are hungry, and we command you to give us meat. Command? It is not thus that travellers speak to Robin Hood. Know that I can give meat here or not as I please. Yes, indeed, and take your purses, if we like, in payment for the dinner. Baron steps toward the king and says aside, Will you endure their insolence? No harm shall come to you. It is May Day, and so you shall all dine with us. The ladies are wary, doubtless. Doubtless they are. I am. You shall all dine here under this oak. Come, Scarlet, bring the venison which Chavisa has cooked for us. Scarlet goes to right and fetches food, which he places on grand in front centre of stage. Tuck enters from left, followed by Allenardale. They spread out food. Tuck, you have our wine. I'll get the wine for these gay travellers. 
moves to left of stage, from which he fetches wine. As he passes Anthony and Guy, he says, You pale, knock-kneed fellows. He insults us. Tuck sets down wine on ground beside food in centre of stage, and then goes to his place on right between Much and Ellenadale. Silence! He is our host now. Draw near all of us. Lady, will you sit here? Thanks, Robin Hood, for your courtesy. Robin Hood handing Queen to seat on centre log. Never shall it be said that Robin Hood was lacking in courtesy to any woman living. Be seated here, good sir. King sits down on centre log beside the Queen. First Lady sits down on right hand log. This is well. Methinks the wood is finer than I thought. Second lady sits on left-hand log. Truly the bowers make a tolerable shelter. Third lady sits down on left-hand log. And the moss is soft. Baron sits down on left log. He is a crafty knave. Beware! Will you not seize him? I will dine first. Betray not who I am, on your peril. Points to Robin, who sits on right-hand log by first lady. There is a king with no cares. There are pasties of my own making. Enter Jock and Joan from left with a basket between them, which they hand round to all. The, the wild fowl's eggs came from, from the lake. Enter left, Aviza, with food, which she hands to Queen. You will not quarrel with the meats we've baked. Nay, indeed, good dame. Moreover, all things taste well under the trees. Is not yours a jovial life? The sorrowing all their cares lay down. Where? In, in the, the greenwood. Green Do you not fear the tyrant's frown? Where? In, in the, the greenwood. Green the hungry vows with food are fed. Where? In, in the, the greenwood. Green the weary find a quiet bed. Where? In the greenwood. Ah, me, I would fain stay here. And I. And I. But it must not be. Robin Hood, it irks me sore to come to the hour of reckoning. First. I must make payment for this food. We have eaten and drunk well. I trust that the food and drink is not poisoned. King rises and hands coin to Robin Hood. In rising, the king's hood falls back a little from his face. Gentle host, take this gold piece for our entertainment. With our thanks. Robin Hood rises, takes coin in his hand, looks at it, and then at the king. Why do you gaze first at me, and then at the paltry coin in your hand? Because your hood has slipped back. That is why I stare. The countenance upon this gold piece is the king's, and it is yours likewise. Kneels. You are the king. Fall on their knees. The king. The king. The king. The king. Yea, I am the king, Robin Hood. Baron springs up and rushes forward towards Robin Hood. Robber, butcher, seize him now. Hang him upon the nearest tree. All rise from their knees. King pushes Baron back. Stand back. No man shall lay hands on him here. We have drunk his wine and ate his meat and you shall not touch him without my leave, though he be ten times an outlaw. Baron moves back left. Oh, wretched spite! You have slain my dear? Verily. Robbed rich abbots? I took their wealth to give the needy. You have defied my officers? I have. You should die. Alas! Alas! Robin Hood bows. So be it. Yet, since you have shown us such kindness, we will spare your life, on condition that you pay a fine. Oh, let it be four hundred pounds! Be it so. Four hundred pounds you pay before noon, and your life is saved. I swear this on the oath of a king whose word was never broken. Alas, master! King sits down again on center log beside queen. Pay the four hundred pounds, and you are safe. I have spoken. Why do you hesitate? Alack, alack! Have we the gold, little much? Alas, I fear not. Play me no tricks. Look in your chest. Scarlet, fetch our treasure chest. Scarlet fetches chest from right, places it in front of King, opens it and looks in, and holds up one coin. There is but one silver piece. My master gave the rest to a poor, feeble man who came this way. Aviza steps toward King. He helped us. Must Robin Hood die? The law says he must, but I will pardon him if he pays the fine. Look in that chest again. Scarlet shakes chest and finally turns it upside down. It is quite empty. Drags it away and turns to Robin Hood. Oh, master, woe is me! Why stand you so unmoved? Did you not hear what the king has said? Goes back behind right log. You will be slain. There is no mending the king's word. Yea, my word is given. If you can pay the fine by noon, you live. 
You smile, Robin Hood. You have treasure hidden, I warrant. Nay, I swear I have not. My chest and purse are empty as winter husks. Then why do you look so proudly? I have a friend, my king, a valorous knight who borrowed four hundred pounds of me, and he promised to repay me beneath this very oak at noon upon May Day. Tis nigh the hour. He will come, and I shall have the money surely. Now that is a marvellous tale. The knight come back to pay a cutthroat in the forest. Ha <laughs> ha! Moreover, it is just on noon. Looks from side to side. I see no knight. It is not yet high noon. I tell you he will come. I tell you he will not. King picks up hourglass. I will take the hourglass in my hand and watch. If the sand run out before the night comes, I must deliver you to justice. But if your debtor comes with the money, looks at Baron, I will fling him in the deepest dungeon who lays a hand on Robin Hood. Queen looks anxiously at hourglass in the king's hand. Alas, the sands run fast. Poor Archer. I think your knight has forgot to look in his calendar. He will come, I have no fear. Moreover, his fair daughter promised she would return and be our May Queen. Your May Queen. Now you may have leave to hang me, if that be true. I speak truly. See you, I will stand here and watch. Scarlet, go and look up towards the ford, and call to me if the knight and the lady come. I can scarce see for tears. I think they will not fail me. Much peeps at hourglass. Master, it is near on the hour. My heart sinks. Robin Hood looks round to them. Have courage, good people. Alas! 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 alas. Surely they will not fail me. Turns front. O oh, time, stand still. I will hide my face. Hides her face. All Robin Hood's people hide their faces. Robin Hood triumphantly turns round. Behold! They come! They come! They, they come! come. They, they come! Well done, brave Robin Hood! He has escaped me! Oh, bitterness! Our chance is past. Enter from left, Knight and Marion, followed by Little John. Knight carries bag of gold. Hail! Brave Robin Hood! Here is your money doubled. Gives money to Robin Hood. Hail! All hail! Knight starts back, seeing the king. The king here? The queen. Bows low. King rises. How? Sir Richard at the Lee is Robin Hood's debtor? In my need he lent me four hundred pounds to redeem my lands. When we were in great extremity he helped us. Robin Hood walks right and puts money into King's hands, kneeling as he does so. King to Robin Hood. You prince of robbers, Robin Hood. Robin moves to right of King. To Knight. I said he should not die if he could pay his fine. My liege, you will forgive him. Marion steps toward King. Oh, pardon him, my king. Dear queen, beg for him. I would fain do so. Did you promise to be Robin Hood's May Queen? I did. I said I would. Then you must keep your promise, fair maiden. It is my command. Oh, gladly I obey. You shall have your money, Robin. Spend some of it on feasting hungry travelers. Gives money to Robin Hood. Robin Hood bows low. I thank you, gracious king. And you'll forgive him forevermore? Since you are his maid, Marion, I must pardon Robin Hood. God save your grace. Knight to Baron. Twas you would fain have bought my lands from the false sheriff before the hour when they were his by right. King sternly to Baron. Then you and the sheriff shall pay the price of your ill deeds. A year I banish you. Go, you and your hirelings hence. Baron goes out left, followed by Anthony and Guy. So justice shall be done, but now, as it is May Day, let us be merry. Robin, lead off the dance with your May Queen. Music, strike up. Marion takes Robin Hood's hand. Till every glade in this wide wood echo the name of Robin Hood. Oh, oh come now to, to the woods, woods and crown the stricken day. day. Now, now each tall, tall tree nods merrily. merrily. So, so all hail, sweet May, and merry month of May. O oh, hail, all oh, hail. hail. The winter time is past, beneath the sun's warm ray. There smiles in earth the good green earth. So all hail, sweet May, and May. Merry month of May, May. O oh, hail, all oh, hail. hail. O oh, come now to the woods, hark what the sweet birds say. The world is fair and we have no care. So all hail, sweet May, merry month of May. 
Oh, hail, oh, hail, 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 hail. All go out in procession, king and queen, followed by knight, ladies in waiting, Marion with Robin Hood, Little John, Scarlet, Much, Allen Adale, Tuck, Aviza, Jock, and Joan. Epilogue Farewell, our little pageants o'er, yet ere we part, just one word more. Now if you love the gay green wood, think kindly on our play, and if you love brave Robin Hood, come back another day. End of Act Three End of Robin Hood by Amos MacDonald Thank <laughs> you.